Thanks very, very much, everyone, for coming along tonight. Okay, I'm coming through. Good. So what I'm going to start off tonight, I've got a picture up on the, uh, the screen there of the bottom end of the Murray River system. So it's basically looking, um, looking from the from northeast of Goolwa down to sort of Goolwa. And the Murray River mouth, I think, is just off, the, off to the left of the image there. So um, this is from about two years ago. So an image showing the situation that we were in um, prior to the last year or so with um, not a great deal of water of, of any significance coming down that system at the end of quite a long period, prolonged period of drought since about 1996. And then we contrast with, um, this is a picture from Cooper's Creek taken just recently, so I have to acknowledge this came from our regional observations team who go out, go out on big trips um, throughout the state and they took this one um, up there a, a few, uh, I think about October last year. So there's an awful lot of water lying around, or that has been lying around there over the last sort of uh, nine months or so, right throughout many areas of Australia. As I'm sure you're all aware, we've had really quite significant rainfall in, the, in particular in the last nine months or so across, across uh, large areas of Australia. So the question that, that, that underlies that we're here for tonight is, so what's going on? What are we seeing? Now, in terms of what we're seeing over the last nine months or so, we basically have seen a really uh, a, a, a La Nina event, La Nina event that's occurred. Now, La Ninas are a feature of natural variability, so I'll make that very clear. Um, where's one of the th one of the points that often seems to confuse people in when we're talking about the human influence on climate, um, the poss any human influence on climate and 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 other natural changes in climate is people kind of frame it as a as a um, either one or the other kind of question. It's either humans influ into influencing climate or it's natural variability. But if there's one message we'd, we'd all, I'm sure, like, like you to take home tonight is it's ro very much seeing both at the same time. So we are seeing a human influence on climate. We are seeing also natural variability. That can be really quite strong. So what is a La Nina? I'm first going to start with a description of, um, of El Nino and then go into La Nina because they're, they're actually opposite phases or opposite parts of a cycle that occurs in the, in the Pacific Ocean which influences Australia's climate quite markedly. So on that, on that top slide there you can see a schematic. We've got um, a, a basically a, a plan out across the Pacific Ocean in the neutral condition or the neutral phase of, of the El Nino Southern Oscillation pattern. Um, you, you see the trade winds blowing uh, al along the equator, blowing from the, s from the southeast, blowing warm water over towards Australia. That's, and and that uh, leaves a, a reasonable amount of tropical convection, a trop tropical moisture rising up from the, the warm ocean surfaces into the atmosphere near Australia. So that's a normal pattern, a normal circulation that we see in the oceans and atmosphere. In an El Nino event, those trade winds weaken off and actually that allows that warm water to move more into the centre in the Pacific and, and even over towards South America. And so that, um, that causes changes in where that tropical convective activity, that all that moist air rising up from the warm oceans occurs. And that basically shifts away from Australia more into the centre of the Pacific. So basically we, we uh, see reductions in rainfall across Australia. Now these, these El Nino patterns and then La Nina's tend to start out around the middle of any particular year, sort of late autumn or winter, um, and then they progress for about nine months or so. Now, La Nina is the opposite phase. So El Nino is drier for Australia, wetter for South America. And it was actually, um, it was actually the name El Nino means boy child in Spanish. So that, that name apparently has come about because the El Nino impact peaks around, around sort of December, around Christmas time, um, in South America. And so that, uh, that name, sort of boy child or, or Christ child, um, is where the El Nino name comes from. So the opposite phase, La Nina, is where we see more of a burst, stronger burst of, of, tr of trade winds along the equator. And that reinforces that, that sort of pushing that warm water over towards Indonesia and Australia, um, enhancing the tropical convective activity that we're getting off the warm oceans. And so same sort of thing, that they tend to start out through winter go for about nine months or so before they weaken off. And um, so we see those you know, sort of changes in what's called the work walker circulation, and Scott may mention, mention that in his talk. Um, so that's basically the, 
what we see is, is wetter, wetter than average conditions, particularly through spring and summer for Australian rainfall in La Nina, La Nina events. So we've seen, certainly seen that through the last nine months or so. So that's a picture of Brisbane in their floods back in, in, sort of late in, in January. Um, and we've seen, you know, I, I, I actually have family in Toowoomba, so it was quite, um, it was pretty startling to see the, uh, the, the, the rainfall flooding through there and in streets that I've walked on um, in the floods that they had there in January as well. But also obviously Victoria, also here in South Australia, we saw a, um, we've seen a number of, of, of fairly significant rainfall events, and particularly one in early December. Some of you may remember really widespread thunderstorm activity, um, really intense rainfall. Uh, we saw a number of daily rainfall records around, quite a huge number around South Australia. So we've certainly not been immune to this, um, to this influence. And I guess one of the, the major points is, so this, yes, this is a feature of natural variability in our climate system. It's also been really unusually strong. So this is a, a graph of the, what's called the Southern Oscillation Index. So this is the original measure of the, um, the phase or the strength of, of El Nino and La Nina patterns. And that, that goes back to about 1876. And so it's the longest uh, record that's available. There's also a fairly simplistic one in some ways. There are newer, uh, more complex measures of the strength of El Nino and La Nina events, but they only go back to about 1950s or so. Um, so in, in terms of this measure, uh, this recent event is the, uh, is the strongest according to this measure, but does get a bit more complex if you look at a more comprehensive measure since the 1950s. So it, it, I guess the message is it's certainly right up there in terms of um, being one of the strongest La Nina events on record. And I guess the other interesting point in this graph, and Scott will elaborate more on this, I'm sure, is if you look at the... So, so uh, La Nina events are reflected in positive Southern Oscillation Index values, and El Nino events are reflected in negative Southern Oscillation Index values. If you look at the ratio of the La Nina events to the El Nino events, it doesn't stay static through that record, it actually varies through time. So in the last couple of decades, for instance, we've actually seen a, f a bit less um, frequency, a, a lower frequency of La Nina events and, and, a few, and a bit more higher frequency of El Nino events. So there's some questions in there around what, what's going on with that, can, what can we see with that in the future that I'm sure Scott will talk to. And I guess the other interesting one that um, I think Carl will actually talk to a little bit as well, we saw a really quite intense tropical cyclone event in tropical, tropical cyclone Yassi that went through Queensland early this year as well. So there's been a lot going on this last few months, um, but there is, there's, so there's a lot of different questions around these events. Um, and I guess, I guess the, another important point to remember, this is a, um, a map of the sea surface temperature patterns through uh, about October last year, so as the La Nina event was really start, starting to gather steam in the Pacific. And so you can actually see that reflected in those cooler than average sea surface temperatures, in the, so the blue areas in the middle of the Pacific there. Um, while around Australia we actually had quite a, quite a broad area, a prolonged area of uh, warmer than average sea surface temperature patterns. And so it's also worth remembering, we also, did quite see, we also saw quite a significant contribution from the Indian Ocean as well. Through, the, through these events over the last uh, nine months or so. And arguably, there's, there's a pretty strong argument that the combination of tropical influences from, that, from, the, from the La Nina event and also the Indian Ocean is really the optimum combination or the, the most conducive combination to rainfall for Australia that we, that we see. And um, so that's a pretty important point. This is really in, some, in many ways as good as it gets in terms of producing rainfall for Australia. And this, this is, these are the results that we've seen in terms of, this is an, a rainfall analysis of the July to March uh, rainfall showing that for almost, uh, for quite a substantial area of Australia, it was highest on record for that July to March period. And so there's, you know, we've, we've seen quite a number of rainfall records being broken right around Australia and in South Australia. Um, our wettest spring on record for, for South Australia um, and our wettest start to the year, wettest January, February, March in South Australia, um, and also uh, several other parts of Australia as well. And our, I believe, uh, second wettest year on record for Australia as a whole, third wettest on, on record in, for, for South Australia as, as, a, as a whole in 2010. So there's been records rolling off uh, right through the last nine months, months or so. 
I guess the really interesting question that I'm sure Carl will talk to is what's going on in southwestern WA? So why are they seeing a, um, a you know, drier than average and even some areas re record driest conditions in, in southwestern WA while we're seeing um, large areas of, of wettest on record? So there's a few questions that I'm going to leave us with here. How much, how much are we seeing? What's going on with cl the climate change influence from human activity? What are we seeing? Is, what are we, what's, the, what's the climate change influence of from human activity in what we've been seeing? Ha and what's, what can we expect? We've had a really wet period. Is, are, we gonna, are we going to see this wet period um, go on for a, few more, for a few years or extend over a decade like we saw through the 1970s, for instance? And is climate change from human activity influencing natural variability, so things like La Nina events and, that, and those sorts of events? So there's a few questions that um, I'll leave us with that um, for our following speakers, I'll defer, defer to these guys to, um, to talk to. Thank you.